Okay, so I've been enjoying um, during that little break there, seeing on social media, mainly Twitter, using the hashtag SOTM2021, um, all the discussion about the talk. There's also lots of discussion going on on Venueless, which when there isn't a talk on, there's a slideshow of all the photos of um, past conferences, which are, are great to listen to and watch you. Um, if you did have a ticket and you're on venue list, don't forget you can ask questions during the talk, um, and that gives us a chance to ask them to the speaker at the end. Um, so we're now going to hear from Chris Libano um, about map, Mapper Tanda, which is mapping with an ageing older population, um, something I don't know about, so I'm interested to hear that. Uh, let's watch his video. Welcome to the State of the Map 2021 event. I am here to share one of our projects in the Philippines, Mapatanda, Mapping for and with the Older Adults. Welcome to the State of the Map 2021 event. I am here to share one of our projects in the Philippines, Mapatanda, Mapping for and with the Older Adults. As an organization, we are a fairly new member of the open street mapping community in the Philippines. Hopefully, by the end of my talk, we hope to connect to more OSM volunteers to help us engage with the older adult population to contribute to OSM and build stronger relations with the local and global community who may be interested to support us in this project. I am Chris Libunao, and I am the Executive Director and Chief Sustainability Officer of Smart City. Again, very welcome to all of you, and thanks again for joining us. So what is the greatest accomplishment of humanity in the last century? Is it the fact that human beings are able to land on the moon? Or is it the invention of the internet? Or perhaps is it the fact that we double our life expectancy? If you lived in the Philippines during the 1900s, your life expectancy is 31 years old. But today, on average, we can live up to about 71 years old and up to almost 80 years old in the years to come. This is amazing, isn't it? And yet, when we talk about smart cities, when we talk about digital transformation, we rarely take into account this reality. The reality that everyone ages, the reality that we need to plan for communities that is age-friendly, accessible, and inclusive. At Smart City, although we agree that the adoption of apps and technologies are beneficial, we are concerned with the current trends where the over-reliance on Smart City apps of the local governments are quite rampant. Why? Because we do it without really fully understanding the current state and culture of data and technology in the community without really appropriating resources for and prioritizing the development of data literacy, digital, technological literacy of the community without safeguards to ensure that the data, the technologies, and even the smart city services will remain open, free, and interoperable in the future. And of course, without engaging and consulting the public early and regularly. In short, we do it without inclusivity and sustainability in mind. We treat smart cities, we treat digital transformation as a technology problem and not a societal one. Well, unless we build, you know, we want to build a society for machines and ro robots, 
we need to move the conversation of building smart cities away from being solely about high technology and application development towards one where the approach is more open, holistic, and people-centric. And how do we do it in smart city? Our data and tech literacy trainings, planning services, and data portals on the local level are open for ongoing development and customization. One that lets smart city, the internal government staff, and of course, the community to build together. What we don't realize is one of the unsung benefits of real smart cities and digital transformation is making a community or a city more accessible for people of any age and enabling them to live independently with better quality of life. These initiatives will only be meaningful and sustainable if these are what the citizens need and what they can relate to. That's why Mapatanda is born. COVID made us realize that data, in particular, open data and digital transformation can indeed offer the opportunity to support our local governments and to future-proof its community. But we really lack the data about them. We believe that older adults are one of the untapped resources that we have in order to get and understand those particular data. So imagine citizens, planners, even private companies and developers having and using the data and information they need to create innovative applications and projects that help improve the city and the citizens of any age quality of life. It will be great, isn't it? So what exactly is Mapatanda? The Mapatanda project is a portmanteau of MAPA, which means a map in the Philippines, and TANDA, which can mean older adult, but it can also mean to remember. So what do we seek in Mapatanda? This is a project that seeks to improve the number and quality of data in OpenStreetMap that are important and relevant. relevant to older adults or senior citizens and the aging population, which is basically 60 and above years old in the Philippines. What does it mean? This involves adding and cleaning features in OpenStreetMap, such as nursing homes, hospitals that provide specialized care for the elderly, retirement homes, local offices for senior citizens, community, community centers, and other facilities that cater to or provide perks and services to older adults. These data can then be used by the local and national organizations and even international organizations for policymaking, planning, and implementing projects and other interventions. Further, the Mapatanda project aims to achieve these following goals. Number one, we want to recruit new OSM volunteers. As we've mentioned earlier, we are a fairly new member of the OSM community as an organization in the Philippines. And through this Mapatanda project, we also aim to contribute to building a more vibrant, stronger, and active mapping community in the country. Second is that aside from mapping for the older adult population, we would also like to directly engage and map with them by introducing them to OpenStreetMap and how can they contribute. As mentioned earlier, we believe that the older adults and the older population are untapped 
knowledge resource. That is why we aim to map with them other relevant and important facilities which they think is relevant for them. Next would be to add offices for Senior Citizens Affairs or OSCA data on OSM for our partner local government units. Under a law, which is the Republic Act 7432 and as amended by RA 9257, the local governments, basically the cities and municipalities in the Philippines, are required to have their own OSCA or Office for Senior Citizens Affairs. This particular office serves as a liaison center to serve the needs of the senior citizens among other functions. So why is this important? This is important because knowing where they are, knowing where they are located in OSM will benefit the older adult population as well as the other stakeholders. We also want to identify existing assets or projects that can be used as starting points for coordinating or consolidating efforts around a particular issue or a service related to older adults. So the intended outcome may include a community uh, profile, perhaps, that identifies unique resources, issues, concerns, and even gaps in the current offerings for older adults. And last but not the least, of course, we also want to strengthen the open street map knowledge of the local government units by connecting them with the OSM community in the country. So where are we at right now? Where is Mapatanda right now? We launched Mapatanda during Open Data Day in April. It was a success and we were able to connect with several OSM com communities. In fact, we were joined by one of the members of the board of OpenStreetMap. Currently, we also have a small internal team that started their own research on the point of interest and facilities relevant to senior citizens. We have also connected with one of the organizations in the country, which directly deals with empowering the older population. That being said, the pandemic affects the rollout of our in-person community mapping plans and really connecting with the older adults. But we still believe that mapping can be a powerful, powerful community tool to reduce deficit-based thinking um, to asset-based about the elder population. What we also realize is that Engaging diverse perspective can be challenging, but partnering with local governments, nonprofits, schools, and the community groups are effective. Creating the base map itself can also be challenging, but local planning agencies and universities can provide technical assistance. At the end of the day, we would like to emphasize that age-friendly communities are based on the principles of active aging throughout life. As a result, they not only benefit the elder adults, but really it benefits everyone. The children, the young, the adults, even the persons with disabilities, and of course, the older persons. With this, here is our ask. Please help us build a future that is data-driven, open, smart, and free. And here is our contact information. And we look forward to hearing from you and, of course, partnering with us. Thank you. And I am Chris from Smart City.
Okay, so um, that was an interesting talk about mapping with older adults. We did have at least one older adult, um, a 63-year-old in the chat there, who I think is still using the first potlatch one editor of OpenStreetMap. Um, there were a few questions mainly about um, what tools they use um, and, and systems to do the mapping. Um, Unfortunately, Chris hasn't joined the video call, and I don't know if they're available or not, or if they're having technical issues. So um, we can see if they they may join the post talk chat room. Um, but yeah, if any speakers are have, having issues with the Q and A, they can use Venulus to direct message me. Um, our next talk, checking the schedule, will be about three D rendering. Um, and that's in 30 minutes. Um, so you've got a while to chat. And even if the speaker isn't in that post talk chat room, um, maybe you could just talk um, and get some information from the older listeners amongst you um, about how they do mapping. So see you in 30 minutes.